Hey, welcome to this video where we'll talk about the right and left brain hemispheres and how to activate or balance them in six different ways. And there was a lot of early hype around this research, or you might have heard this used in a kind of pop science way, like, oh, they're, they're a right-brained person or left-brained person. And a lot, of, a lot of that research has been debunked, but however, there is a lot of really compelling evidence based on patients who have lost one function in one hemisphere or the other because of a stroke or another reason, as well as patients who have had their corpus callosum that, collect, that connects the two hemispheres severed because of seizures or whatnot. And so a lot of this research has been summarized by Ian McGilchrist, who's a former psychiatrist in his book, The Master and His Emissary, The Divided Brain and the Making of the Western World. And what I'm going to talk about here is this hemispheric difference based on how I've found it relevant to mental fitness. Both hemispheres of the brain are needed for nearly every function, and they're active basically all the time. So we need our whole brain. A lot of these are kind of generalizations about which, for certain functions, which hemisphere is more dominant. And it has been shown that the 300 to 800 million fibers that connect the two hemispheres are largely inhibitory. So it seems like when one hemisphere is doing playing its functions, it's also by default almost like deactivating the, um, the other hemisphere that might have the opposite functions. And so we'll talk about some examples where you can actually see this in yourself play out. So in general, the left brain hemisphere tends to be more logical, detail-oriented. It likes to use language and kind of name things and label them. It likes timelines and patterns and strategies. It's more mechanical and tending towards seeking and searching, as well as this sense of self, the, the ego. It's a, essentially cooking up explanations and trying to create concrete models out of a complex world. And what Ian McGilchrist thinks, what he hypothesizes in his book, is that our culture has become more left brain dominant. I'll read this quick passage. He's talking about what the world would look like if it was a left hemisphere world. The world as a whole would become more virtualized and our experience of it would be increasingly through meta representations of one kind or another, like memes and such. Fewer people would find themselves doing work involving contact with anything in the real lived world rather than with plans, strategies, paperwork, management, and bureaucratic procedures. So we can see how maybe this shift towards a more mechanized and technological world that's largely lived online could be the result of more left-brain dominant way of thinking. In fact, I, I read a funny comment online about how ChatGPT seemed to be like this lobotomized left hemisphere in a way. It was talking as, as the left hemisphere would experience the world. On the other hand, the right hemisphere tends to be more feeling-based, more compassionate, a kind of holistic big picture thinking. It likes imagination and symbolic representation. So like artwork, for example, the symbols that come in our dreams might be more characteristic of right brain thinking. It's present oriented. It thinks about the collective, like the whole tribe. It's a little more flowing. It's associated with more open attention rather than like zero in focus attention, which is more of a left brain function. And there's a great example of what it's like to be in the right hemisphere from a scientist, a Harvard neuroanatomist named Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor. Uh, you can listen to my interview with her that I did a few years ago on the FitMind podcast. But if you're interested, you can check out her awesome TED talk where she describes what happened when her when she had a stroke and her left hemisphere went offline. She said, quote, when my left brain went offline, I lost all words and language, including the mental file that held all the details of my life. Consequently, I had no identity and knew nothing about myself. End quote. 
And this kind of shows why we do need both hemispheres to be a functional person. But this experience for her was very blissful because she said it's like she put down all of her emotional baggage when she was just the, the, in the right hemisphere. It was this blissful, like she described it as nirvana, this all-encompassing conscious awareness. So we can see how both functions of that are mostly right and mostly left brain hemisphere localized are essential. We both need the ability to be present and connected to other people and also to be planning and thinking about ourselves and all the little details and the logical bits. But you can also maybe think about how our education system tends to emphasize the left brain qualities. It's helpful to recognize in our own experience which hemisphere we might be operating more out of at a given time. Ideally, we can kind of shift throughout the day and use which hemisphere or which functions might be most useful to us at that time. So now I'm going to talk about six ways that you can actually potentially activate the right hemisphere because I think if you're like me, there's, there could be more of an imbalance towards the left hemisphere way of being kind of caught up in our thinking and planning and organizing, and it's, it can be really nice to shift to the more right hemisphere qualities. And just to caveat that these are not absolutely proven, this is more speculation based on what we know about these activities and the qualities of the left and right hemisphere. So the first way to shift is using the four R's that we've been learning in this course. So using the four R's, you would recognize when you've become very kind of self-centered or deep focused on like me, 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 and maybe your planning mind comes online. So that would be more of a left brain function and you'd recognize this. And then you could release this in a number of ways. One way would just be to open your scope of awareness and drop down into the heart area and even bring up metta or compassion and then relish, relish in this field of open compassion and care for others and then remain there, remain in this more open awareness and more kind of caring mode of being. And there you could feel almost this shift out of the left brain into the more right hemisphere functions. The second way is through gratitude this quality of appreciating and kind of smiling at what's presently in front of us. The third way to potentially shift brain hemispheres would be through open landscapes, like just being out in nature with a kind of panoramic vision. And the fourth would be through movement, like traditionally Qigong and yoga. There are many ways to kind of drop in and become more of a embodied awareness rather than like detached in our thinking. So movement is a great way to potentially enter a more right lateralized mode of function. And then the fifth is to draw or paint. The right function is associated with the more artistic and creative way of operating. And the sixth is kind of a little hack. It's just to breathe through your left nostril. So you can like take one thumb, cover your right nostril, Take a couple of breaths in and out just through your left nostril. And this is similar to a yoga technique called Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing. Usually they breathe through one and then the other to kind of balance out. But I did find a paper that was correlating the uninostral airflow. So in other words, just breathing in one nostril or the other. And it studied 23 right-handed males and showed that a relatively greater cognitive ability in one hemisphere that correlated with the opposite nostril that was being breathed through because your right brain is more connected to your left half of the body. I should have said this and vice versa. The right side of the body is more connected with the left hemisphere. And I even, I read somewhere that even the two halves of our face look slightly different because they look more like the personality that would be that other, other hemisphere, which is kind of cool. So in summary, here are a few ways to essentially balance out your brain. I also want to thank my friend and teacher, Bhante Ananda, because he's one of the people who kind of put this on my radar as an important tool for meditation and for life in general. 
and hopefully we can begin to notice more like which half of the brain is am I kind of living out of or living from and then if we're kind of caught up in one way or another we can use our metta awareness this observation of the mind to adaptively use which hemisphere would be most useful and we can begin to kind of balance out and live more in balance using our thoughts and our planning mind and our detail orientedness when it's useful and then also being able to drop out of it into a kind of compassionate more right lateralized mode of being when that's useful thanks so much for taking the time to hear me out and i'll see you tomorrow for some more training